Thank you. Well, I was honored to be able to testify today in support of Assembly Bill 145 because as I indicated to the committee, uh, I have been practicing law for more than 40 years. I've represented countless, uh, more than a thousand victims of child sexual abuse. Often I have even represented groups of victims of child sexual abuse, adult survivors of child sexual abuse, and this is in a number of different states. And as I indicated to the committee, they could look around and maybe not see the children there in the hearing room, but even though they couldn't see the children, they were actually looking often at adults who were the children who were sexually abused, some of whom never told anyone some of whom disclosed for the first time today in their very powerful testimony. And we talked about the reasons that uh, often children do not disclose to their mothers or their siblings or their friends or their counselors uh, or their, uh, those who love and care for them. And sometimes it's because they've been threatened by the perpetrator Sometimes it's because their family members have been threatened. Sometimes it's because they feel ashamed or sometimes because they feel they uh, have been taught that nobody will believe them. And also they don't feel safe if they are testifying or, or they, if they are disclosing to anyone what happened to them. So there were in the room today many survivors of child sexual abuse, and it wouldn't surprise me if some of them are people who still have not disclosed today. Um, so this occurred in Nevada. I'm looking forward to Nevada taking the lead on this. Um, if this bill is passed, it will actually be uh, provide more rights to child sexual to child sexual abuse victims than is currently provided in California. In fact, I didn't mention in the hearing, but I'll mention here. And um, so, you know, we all talk about how much we care about victims, but I think we can show that by actually providing bills which expand the rights of child sexual abuse victims. That's how we can help them, and AB 145 is one of those ways, um, because it will provide access to the civil justice system. And as I was pointing out at the end of my testimony, only a very small percent of child sexual abuse victims actually have their cases prosecuted. Some are rejected for prosecution. Sometimes the victim never goes to law enforcement. It's important for the victims to have a remedy, even if they can't get it in the criminal justice system, for whatever reason, because perhaps because the burden of proof is so high, but they need to have that option, at least in the civil justice system, which requires a lower burden of proof. And in some cases, they can have it in both <coughs> systems. The point is that we don't slam the door shut in the face of uh, child sexual abuse victims. The, the door to the courthouse should remain open, the door to justice, so that they can seek compensation from the wrongdoers. Because I often say the cost of the wrong should not be borne by the victim. It should be borne by the wrongdoer. And putting a cost on it, whether it's in the criminal justice system or in this case, in the civil justice system is really important because it's consequences for the wrongdoer, for the perpetrator. And it's going to help to empower victims and make the perpetrators accountable. Um, as I also mentioned in the, in the hearing, it doesn't mean there'll be more civil lawsuits necessarily. There are many, many confidential settlements. I do confidential settlements almost every day. I'm not doing one today because I'm here. But next week I'll be doing some, and many, you'll never hear about it. And that's important because sometimes the victim of child sexual abuse as an adult still doesn't want anyone to know. So their name will not be made public if it's a confidential settlement. 
point is this opens up the door to possible confidential settlements for acts, wrongful acts that were committed many, many years ago.